Hello, David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a quick illustration of the impact of default correlation on a CDO or basket credit default swap. To keep this example simple, I've got a stylized reference portfolio here of 10 bonds. And this simplifying assumption includes that each of the 10 bonds has the same 1% probability of default. Now, if this is a CDO, then this would be the junior tranche, sometimes called equity tranche, and then up here would be the senior tranche. And the analog in terms of a basket credit default swap down here at the junior tranche would be what we'd call a first to default basket credit default swap. And up here at the senior tranches, we would have a ninth or 10th to default basket credit default swap. So there's the reference portfolio. Then to illustrate the impact of default correlation, I've just got two scenarios. Here in this column, notice the correlation equals zero. That's the low correlation scenario and where default correlation specifically is zero. So that's independence. And then here I go to the other extreme really, perfect default correlation, default correlation of 1.0. And then we can understand, start to understand now why there's a counterintuitive dynamic here, which is to say, as correlation increases, so think of that as going from this column to this column, right, left to right, that's an increase in default correlation among the reference bonds, the, the junior tranche is gonna become less expensive or have a lower spread, the senior tranche is gonna become more expensive or have a higher spread. They go in opposite directions. And in the middle, mezzanine, that's gonna be a complex and ambiguous result. We can't say anything definitive about that, superficially anyway. So how could this be the case? Well, look at the zero correlation scenario. And if we go down here, what is the probability we will experience no defaults among all 10? Well, this is the zero correlation scenario. So it's really just one minus the PD or 99% raised to the 10th power. In other words, the probability of experiencing no defaults in this portfolio with zero default correlation is 99% raised to the 10th power. It's the probability that all 10 do not default. So that means if we take one minus the probability of no defaults, we'll get 9.6%, and then under independence, that tells us the probability that we will get at experience at one or more defaults among the 10. So this becomes the probability of triggering the junior tranche or the first to default tranche. Under independence, it's 9.6. Now, let's just go to the perfect correlation scenario this is a little easier. If these are perfectly correlated, either they all survive or they all default together. And in fact, the probability there of no defaults is 99%. That's one minus the 1%. That means the probability of one or more defaults here under perfect correlation is 1%. After all, either that first one defaults, in which case they all default, or none of them default. So now you can see as we go from left to right and we're referring to the junior tranche or the first to default tranche, notice the probability of triggering that junior tranche goes down from 9 to 6, 9.6% down to 1% as the correlation increases. So as correlation increases, we say the junior tranche the probability of triggering a first to default basket CDS goes down. So this junior tranche becomes less expensive or has a lower spread. Up here at the senior level, notice what is the probability? Let's just refer to the 10th to default basket CDS. What is the probability of triggering that? To be extreme here, the probability of 10 under independence, notice the formula here, it is 1% raised to the 10th power. After all, we need all 10 of them to default. So that's 1% multiplied by 1% multiplied by 1%, 1% raised to the 10th power. 
is an infinitesimally small number. It's a very low probability all of them will be um, all of them will default, and therefore a low probability under independence that the tenth the default credit swap will be triggered. Now go. Let's increase the correlation all the way up to 1.0. What's the probability? that a tenth default is triggered? Well, it's 1%. After all, they're perfectly correlated. If that first one does, they all do. And so notice up here for the senior tranche or tenth to default basket CDS, as we increase the correlation, we're moving from an infinitesimally small number all the way up to 1%. It has exactly the opposite reaction to default correlation. That is to say, as correlation increases from zero to one, the senior tranche becomes more expensive, has a higher spread because the probability's increasing, in this case, dramatically. Here's a diagram that I, a Venn diagram that tries to illustrate the same idea. I think this is helpful. The rectangle is the entire portfolio. Here, this is just a two asset portfolio. Now to keep it real simple, not 10, but just two. Red indicates the pro, uh, a default here on the first asset. Here's a uh, red indicates default on the second asset. Here's a low correlation. And if we think about the senior tranche, that's the probability of this area right here. If there's low correlation between these two assets, notice this area is pretty small. As we increase the correlation, you can see the probability of both of the assets defaulting increases. Similarly, if you want to think about the junior tranche, well, that's the probability of anything in the red happening. Here under low correlation, we have a larger space than we do the union if the default correlation is higher. So a, a graphical illustration with the two assets to try to put some color on that idea. This is David Harper, the Bunnock Turtle. Thanks for your time.